next session on the fintech truck in Iraq. Um, now we have a presentation from Adam Sagi, and he's going to talk us about the business date and close of business date uh, concept in Finland. So, welcome, Adam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's good to see people are interested in Finaract and based on numerous presentations, what we had so far uh, during these couple of days, it shows the software is in the right track and uh, got right fully, if I can say so, into the spotlight uh, nowadays. Hopefully by now you've learned a lot about Finaract, how to, how does it work, what can it be used for, how to run it uh, properly, and, and so and so 2022 and 2023 were an adventurous and important years in in the life of Finrat. several new functionalities and architectural changes were introduced but before i deep dive into that functionalities let me uh, say a couple of words about my uh, myself my name is adam shaggy i'm from budapest hungary it's in the uh, middle of europe and now I'm, and uh, right now I'm working as a principal software engineer at Bestflow. Uh, a little history about myself. Uh, since 2013, I'm working as a Java developer. And during these years, I stepped onto the FinTech track. And if I recall correctly, in 2020, just before the COVID, I got involved with Finaract. And since there, there was no stop. One project led to the to another one, and uh, this year I've got the honor. Uh, I was invited to be uh, to become an Apache Finerec PMC member as well. But kind of that's enough, uh, enough about me. What I will uh, will talk about uh, today is the business date and uh, close of business day concept in Finerec. But before I'm doing that, what is exactly the Finaract, which I'm, I'm sure you heard a lot uh, during these uh, couple of days. But literally, uh, in, in a couple of words, Finaract is a, a, a mature platform which provides a reliable, robust, but an affordable core banking solutions for finance institutions. What does it what does it mean exactly or what does it used for it will not be as detailed uh, the the list as uh, in the previous slide cecil uh, talked about but in short for any organization even if it's big or small it provides uh, some core functionalities such as client data management loan management saving management accounting it really depends on what that uh, financial uh, service required. And by now we have uh, a quite detailed list what the finer can be used for or what services it can provide. But back to my topic, business dates and close of business uh, day concept. Uh, as in many systems, in Finaract as well, there are many type of dates. Creation date, when it got executed something, the submitted on date, value date, when it got modified, the tenant date, system date, and so and so. Let's see a little bit what exactly does it mean. So uh, in the systems, the most important was uh, uh, dates are the creation date, last modified date, which we are using mostly for uh, audit purposes, restoring the date and the time as well. The submitted on date or posting date, uh, you might uh, met with, with both uh, uh, definitions by now. It's usually when a transaction uh, got uh, executed and usually it's uh, it depending uh, depended on the tenant date or the business date uh, since the new concept was introduced uh, the submission and date posting date when it got submitted and as i mentioned the transaction date value date when it got executed uh, then on date, it will be. Uh, it it was existing in the system. It's uh, it's a ton, uh, the Infineract. You can define a tenant time zone, which will be used for identifying uh, uh, the tenant date and define uh, when it's ended. 
by midnight by default and uh, the incoming transactions uh, which uh, which date it should be uh, stored validating against that some of the new uh, definitions, the business date, which will be a logical date. It will not be tied anymore to any time zone calendar. Uh, and as I will uh, talk about a little bit later in more detail, it's, it's, uh, it, it's about to uh, be an altern alternative to the tenant date. A business day will be a time frame which will be logically grouped together actions and on a particular business date. And the COB acronym is for close of business or close of business day. Uh, it will represent the, this new uh, definition, uh, what we kind of the concept which uh, was introduced into the FINRAC. And the COB date is for a logical date which will be used mostly for the COB job uh, execution context as a business date. So in category wise, uh, we had three kind of dates. The system date, which was uh, already mentioned, is for audit purposes. The tenant date, which was used so far for business purposes, uh, validations, and it was, uh, uh, it was defined in a tenant time zone. Uh, and the user provided it. A uh, little example, what does it exactly means in, uh, in practical? If I'm doing a repayment with 2023 uh, October 5 uh, into the FINRA Act, and the tenant date is, uh, uh, the tenant date was set UTC minus 5, which could mean I'm sending a backdated transaction and the actual tenant date was 6th of October. Uh, what it got exactly stored into the system, the repayment transaction date, as it was a user-provided date, it will be 5th of October. Uh, it got submitted on based on the tenant date. So the system will store it 6th of October, which uh, where it was uh, got submitted, but the creation date, which is the audit purposes, and we and if the system was set to use the UTC as a system time zone, which is highly recommended, uh, then it will store 2023 5th of October uh, in this example uh, 8 p.m. So let's see a couple of words about the tenant date. What, what, what were we doing? It was a date based on the tenant time zone. So it was, it was tied to the tenant calendar. Uh, what does it mean? It means the next day, next day usually started at midnight. I mean, not usually, always started at midnight. As you can see in the example at the right side, if uh, in the first example it's the 10th of October, just one minute before midnight, the tenant date will be 10th of October. But when it reached the, uh, I mean, the physical uh, uh, time reached midnight, uh, a new day just started, and from that moment the the date will be 11th of October. It's. Uh, one of the, so it's always in B sync. So it's one thing which uh, which was a pro for this tenant uh, time day. We don't need to care about the synchron uh, synchronization. It was always tied to a physical calendar. But as as the side effect or negative effect, we had no control over the date. We were unable to stop the time. There was no uh, option to say, okay, we don't want uh, yet <laughs> the, the next day should uh, start it because we have some, some else, uh, actions we wanted to execute in the system, so which kind of uh, listed in this slide with what was exactly the problems with the tenant date. The financial organizations often have uh, unique rules and requirements for, for managing the business dates. And uh, the system should be set up and uh, support those, those needs. And the tenant calendar was not always following these business needs. Uh, for example, one of the, one of the problematic uh, uh, pieces was in FINRA. If we are executing jobs, to do some calculations or uh, 
execute uh, uh, different kind of actions such as reporting, interest calculations or anything. If we started it as before midnight, there was a chance with a, a, a huge uh, data uh, amount, it might not finish before midnight. Half of the, for example, in the loans, half of the loans will be uh, calculated the interest and the interest transactions uh, for, for the actual date, which was uh, 5th of October in this example. And the other half was uh, only executed on 6th of October, the very next day. If we have started it on or after the midnight, then it was not really a close of business. All, the, all these actions were accounted to the very next day, and, may, and the only options we had is using backdated uh, transaction date to say these interests were calculated for the, for yes, for the day uh, prior, not the actual one. And it's not really fit for uh, regulatory comp uh, uh, compliance as well, having reports where exactly you need to be able to tell when a transaction was executed and when a business day just uh, got closed or ended. Also, there was some lack of uh, flexibility, what, uh, what was limiting the, the usages. If a disaster, I mean, one of them is the disaster recovery, when something bad really happens and the system just shut down and it takes maybe a couple of days to, to uh, put it online again, and there was no options, uh, I mean, uh, uh, before that, to say, okay, I have all the transactions that needs to be uh, accounted in the system. I'm executing it one by one, like nothing happened. That was just uh, out of picture. And also uh, testing uh, purposes or multi-day use cases was hard to, to replay as uh, the system was not really uh, supporting it. And also there was no real close of business day support. The business day ended when we, when uh, the tenant time zone hit the midnight, and that's all. There was no any uh, availability to say, no, I don't want it to be stopped because I'm still calculating a couple of things. Uh, what, what usually the people could do, start calculating and adding the interest and the penalty uh, just after midnight, and uh, and uh, risking the and risking whether a repayment just happens. So we are calculating uh, the penalty for the loans. And if a repayment just happens on the very next day, a penalty should have been applied for a loan. But it could happen. It was paid uh, just before the job picked up that particular loan, and the, the penalty was not pay, uh, uh, paid anymore. I mean, it was not needed. The, the system, uh, uh, it was fully paid off, so it, it could cause uh, unwanted situations. Now, there was no a particular point where the transaction, uh, we can decide it when a transaction is still belongs to that business day or a content to the next day, but still do some calculations based on uh, what was the, the actual state just before we said, okay, we are about to close that uh, business day. So let's see what is this uh, close of business day concept. We identified a couple of points which, uh, which should met or must met to, to, uh, to have this, this concept. One of them was already existing in the system. We, we had to have a point where new incoming actions belong to the next day. If, if, if uh, for when, while we were using the tenant date, it was quite easy, that was midnight. By having uh, the business date, which I will talk about a little bit later, we can decide what should be that point. And from that point, exactly we can tell, okay, all the incoming transactions till that point belong to that business day, and we just say, no, everything else which, uh, which come uh, should belong to the, to the very next day, but still 
we have some uh, we have some actions or and jobs or calculations we have to, have to do on those transactions uh, as part of a, uh, closing the business day, which should still belong to that particular uh, date we are closing. So as uh, uh, on a later uh, slide I will show you, we introduce two logical dates for that purposes. But before we are uh, going into, in, into that, uh, yes, so as, as I mentioned, uh, we had to be able to 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 uh, define when a request belongs to that uh, part, particular there, or all the others should go to the next one, which was kind of a new uh, concept we, uh, uh, that was introduced. Having a close of business day relevant jobs and other uh, things we had to, I mean, having this close of business day concept, that was a must-have before we can define these jobs which are used uh, as a closing that business day doing all the calculations still accounted to that particular day and all the other uh, actions you know just uh, was accounted to the very very next one um yeah let's see the other one so what could be the solution uh what we decided was we have to introduce at least two new dates. One of them is the business date. The other one is the close of a business date. And also we have two contexts. One for the real-time actions, which date uh, it should be used, incoming transactions to be validated against. And the other one is the close of uh, day actions. Uh, all the jobs which we define and all the business steps which we define we, that needs to be executed as part of closing that actual business day, and but still uh, all the actions, all the outcomes, to be accounted to for the very next, uh, for the very same day. As you can see on the on the example, in this example at midnight there was a change where we uh, uh, in increased the business date we let the system to to start the very next day which was in this case 7th of october an incoming repayment was already uh, there was an incoming repayment and it was handled as the repayment handling the repayment submitted on date was 7th of october however there was a a, ben, a bunch of jobs which we call close of business day jobs that were still running. And in that bubble, as you can see, hopefully it's not too small, the, the font size, it's still all the actions, all the interest transactions which are about to be created, it still belongs to 6th of October. And if it happens, uh, any of the incoming repayments was belonging to a loan, in this case, which was not yet uh, executed, closed for that business day, then immediately the system was uh, picking it up and executing. But uh, from that, Istvan was uh, already talked uh, enough uh, on yesterday. It's out of scope for us, but, lit but as you can see, the important thing, we have two kind of dates and we have two kind of context, which we uh, differentiate. And let's see what's the business date and how it's different from the tenant date. So as I mentioned already, it's kind of an alternate for the, for the tenant date. We are not tied uh, anymore to the tenant time zone. What we have rather is a business calendar. Business to define uh, your own business calendar gives you uh, much flexibility and ability to 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 match uh, some regulatory comp uh, requirements as well because you can define when you want uh, the business date to be ended. In this example, what you see on the screen at uh, 5 p.m. the business day ending. Nine to five, it's a, a pretty uh, usual opening hour for banks in Hungary. If any of the financial institutions decides when it's ending the business hours, that should be the ending of the business day. With this business date concept, they can do it either manually or with a scheduler. They can schedule when this business date, uh, date to be changed 
And from that moment, every incoming actions will be accounted uh, for, for, the, for the next uh, day. What we earn with this new logical date, this dates can follow the business uh, needs entirely. What we kind of lose is the automatic sync. There is no physical calendar which we, are, which we can sync, but what we can do, we can create a scheduler in Finera or even an external scheduler which can manage via API course or via job course uh, the business date uh, value and what to do with it. Um, business date, so, uh, similarly as the tenant date is not really supporting time parts, we don't need it. What we're interested in, in on which business date it happened. As I mentioned, it can be managed manually uh, via API course or with scheduled jobs. We will take a couple uh, examples about it. Uh, similarly, as the tenant date, all the business actions, when we are using the business date concept, all the business actions uh, uh, is, uh, shall use this date. So whenever we're submitting a new transaction, even if on the tenant, uh, based on the tenant time uh, zone, uh, what, what is today, 10th of October, if the business date was set for 9th of October, the submitted on date will be 9th of October because that's, that's, uh, that's kind of the, the extra, the, the protein which we earn by it. We can define what exactly the business date, what, is, what should be exactly the business date which we are want to uh, check against or validate against or, or accounting or incoming transactions, even if it's a submitted one or running the jobs and what should be the outcome. Um, business day. Since, just a moment. Yeah, so we had the business date and by bus with this business date, we had this uh, business day concept which while we were using the tenant date, it was quite uh, easy to see. From midnight till 11 uh, uh, 59, that was a business day. When, when, uh, from the moment we introduced this business date and this uh, logical date handling, we have the ability to define how uh, what should be the length of this business date. And it can vary. A uh, quick example, on weekdays, from Monday to Friday, we, uh, all the business day uh, uh, last till 16, 49, uh, 59. But on weekends, since weekends, um, since most of the banks are not working on weekends, we just simply define from uh, 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 Friday, uh, 5 p.m. till Monday, 5 p.m. It belongs to the Monday business date. Uh, as you can see on the, on the example, uh, with the week, weekend days uh, example, Friday was 6th of October, and even on Saturday and Sunday, the business date was uh, 9th of October, which is the Monday. And every transaction or anything happened in the system, it was accounted uh, for that particular day. We had this flexibility and uh, to, to support the, the business requirements. Also, by this business date and logical date handling, uh, we can support a well better uh, disaster recovery. As I mentioned, uh, the, the system just goes down for a couple of days. Finally, uh, people are able to put it back online. There was a bunch of transactions that needs to be accounted. It's quite easy with this logical date handling to uh, uh, send those uh, transactions one by one into the system. And by uh, uh, changing the business date, kind of replaying how it should have been happened if there was no uh, system outage. And also for testing purposes, 
uh, since we are not tied for a physical calendar, it's quite easy for testing purposes, uh, trying out uh, whole uh, uh, testing whole loan cycles. For testing, we can just simply say with every hour, we are changing the date, increasing the date, and we are just checking how does it, uh, how does it look like for a 10 years old uh, life cycle to run it through on different scenarios within a day, because we can do it. We were not tied anymore to a calendar that gives us such a flexibility. We don't need to worry about it, how to do it with backdated account creations, backdated uh, transactions. It's just working out of blue quite easily. And the best of it, it is really supporting now the close of business day because we can define when that uh, date should be ended and it can react on different business needs and requirements. And even if it says uh, business day just ended for today, still the jobs which uh, was uh, which we are identifying as uh, jobs that needs to be executed for closing that particular day still can be executed and still all the outcomes and all the results are belonging for that day why parallel any incoming new transactions are already accounted for the very next day so there would be no anymore reporting which says I was in, uh, calculating the interest for the accounts and half of them was done for 6th of October, half of them was on 7th of October because it was running way too long. You, should, you would have by these logical dates and this close of day handling and jobs, you will have a clear and accurate, by now accurate uh, reports and uh, entries in the, in, in the system. I already mentioned a couple of times the COB date, which is the second logical date we introduced. It's also uh, based on the business calendar, uh, uh, and we have the option to choose whether we want to keep it in sync with the business date. So whenever we are changing the business date, moving to the next day, it can automatically uh, sync the close of business date as well, which is a by default uh, configuration in Finera. And whatever it happens, as you can see on the example, with five o'clock, we are closing the actual business uh, day, but still we have a bunch of close of business day jobs to be executed. If, it's, uh, if this synchronization happens automatically, we can just immediately start it. However, if we want to do it differently, and for example, deciding we want to change the business date, uh, but we don't want the close of business day uh, date to be changed because we don't want to execute the close of business, maybe just a later day since there was some system, system problems or, or any reasons to do so, we can decide on, we are not changing the, bus, uh, the COB date and we are not executing the COB for it, but still all the incoming transactions we would like to accept it in the system and accounting it uh, properly. And However, if we are using it for the normal or default purposes, this COB date will be used as the business date inside uh, the context when we are executing the business day jobs. Because what's happening, for example, we are applying the penalties and if there was any penalty to, uh, to be applied, it will create a new transaction in Finera. But that new transaction will use that COB date as the business date. So that's, that's how the system will be able still accounting those new uh, results into the, with the proper date into the system. And that's how it, it will be consistent. As the side effects, anything happens in the system by these COB jobs, it still belongs to that particular uh, business day. Uh, let's see really quickly. I believe I, have, I still have some time for it. So let's see uh, how, how, we will, how we can configure all these things in Finera. 
There are two global configurations we are talking about. One of them is enab enabling the business date. And the other one is whether the business date and the COB date should be kept uh, in sync. What we, um, let's see. So the business date, data model, a new table was introduced to the FINARACT M business date. Uh, the name was M business date. And here, right now, by default, we are storing these two uh, new dates which got introduced. One of them is the business date, the other one is the COB date. The FINARACT can be easily extended with uh, additional values if, if needed for future use cases. Uh, and you can define your own uh, requirements or, uh, or uh, business logic for it, or just reuse what we already have uh, uh, there. As I mentioned, two configurations can be used. But if, you're enabling, if you are enabled business date usages, that will be used instead of the tenant date. If not, which is by default the default value for backward compatibility, uh, the business date logic's falling back to use the tenant date like nothing happened. You, uh, you're not using this logical date. And the other one is to keep in sync the COB date. Whenever we are changing the business date, the COB date got uh, uh, as well uh, updated, usually business date minus one day. Via API, you can easily set and change uh, these, uh, these logical dates by sending a post request. Uh, I believe it's not really requires too much uh, explanation. And uh, also you, you are able via these APIs uh, fetch the actual business dates, what was set, all of them or just a particular one. Uh, let's see, as I mentioned, if, uh, you, if you don't want to use the API for it, you can schedule a job which can do automatically increasing this business date. There is a job, increase business date by one, uh, one day job, which can be uh, executed. And a uh, little uh, introduction with a pseudo code about the business uh, function, how does it work, is do what validations is doing, what, what's the business logic behind it before it's, uh, it's increasing that. Contextual dates. Uh, if, if I may go back a little bit and referring back uh, to these points, the requests which were initiated on a particular business day, the outcome must belong to that particular day. Uh, Maybe it's not the best uh, uh, way to phrase it, but what it is about whenever a request uh, uh, came into the FINARAC and we start the processing, the date cannot be changed anymore, at least not for that uh, request uh, lifecycle. So whenever we start processing a request, that should be a, 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 a date should be fetched or somehow calculated, and that date uh, to be used for any, uh, uh, so an anywhere in the outcome, there, there should not be case whenever uh, I'm, I'm doing an action which will uh, create two transactions, and that's part of the side effect of that request of the two transactions has different dates. So what we are doing is, we are fetching from the database if the, if the business date is enabled. Per request basis, we are fetching it from the DB and we are storing it as a contextual date. And anywhere in the system, whenever we are where we need the actual business date, we are fetching it from that context. Uh, fetching uh, from a cache in, instead of a database can be an option, but must be really careful with it, because it could happen if you are running multi-node FINARAX and the cache is not uh, kept in sync in all of the nodes, then you would have different uh, business dates, which is a really unwanted uh, uh, result would be so. I would say it's not a, not a, it's not causing such a bottleneck to, to get it from the DB and just cache it for as per the, the request. So 
the is business test uh, context creation is usually one of the first steps. What we are doing when uh, we start processing uh, our request and uh, we are storing it in the local context uh, util. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes with the time. We are quite fine. So modifying all the, so what changes we were doing in Finera? We had to modify all the places where the tenant date was used and with very limited uh, exceptions, we modified it to, to get the business date and the business date logic had these fallback solutions. If the business date was not enabled, it was still using the tenant date. And we had to go through a couple uh, places and logic, replacing the system date with the tenant date or the business date if it was uh, used incorrectly uh, priorly, uh, went it through the native queries, the reports, and uh, enhancing the transactions and everything. Uh, let's see whether you have any, any questions regarding these uh, this functionality. Hopefully it was not too dry, but uh, but yeah, it was a really big change in Finarag, but hopefully for the for the good purposes. <laughs> yep, sorry, Alex, go ahead. So the question was how how long did it take to introduce the, this business logic and close of uh, business concept? Well, it's a really good question. So I believe we start. I started to work on it uh, around in February. It was, I believe, it was a uh, four months. Still, we had our proof of concept. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, since the Finneract is a pretty big code base with many functionalities, we were morely focusing on a, a smaller piece. Clients, loan handling, transaction handling, accounting, and some other places such as the savings and, and tax and share products and everything is might, might not yet fully uh, Went, so for those not might fully went through to, to use the business date, but we are progressing it. Uh, we are doing it as, as, as we are touching the, the, those, those things. Hopefully from the community, other people will pick it up as well and, 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 and they will take some of these job, uh, these works. Yeah, yeah. So the question was uh, what experience and skill set it needs to be uh, to, to make those changes. I would say if the concept, uh, if they understand the concept or uh, how does it work, what it needs to be done, I would say anyone can pick it up and it could be a, a quite good starting uh, point for 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 newcomers uh, to get familiar with the system. I would say by now we have uh, a couple good examples that can be followed, how we managed uh, changing these dates, where uh, we had to change or review the behavior, if, the, if it was requiring some uh, database changes, how the liquid base changes looked like. So I would say it's, 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 it can be a, a quite good starting point for anybody who want to get involved with Finaract. Yeah, please. But so you mentioned that you don't have a time zone. So how to handle different time zones, all time zone transactions? Like Canada, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Finaract is, uh, is supporting multi-tenancy and this all, uh, this tenant dates and everything, uh, this concept, uh, uh, came, uh, by, by that. So 
one funeral code base can support multiple multiple tenants. For example, one tenant in Canada, another one in Germany, totally different time zones. And whenever this tenant did any actions, that tenant time zone was picked up and the tenant date was calculated from that. Uh, the difference here for for each tenant, you can define a business date, but it really doesn't, uh, it really not need to belong to any time zone, rather what the actual tenant uh, defines as a business date. And whenever you are, if you are trying to uh, do any actions in the system, it's still uh, the only thing it will check what's the actual uh, business date if it makes sense. So if you are in a time zone where right now is not 10th of October, but 11th of October, you cannot send in a transaction with 11th of October because it doesn't matter where you are. It matters where the tenant or where that business was defined, what's the actual date of them. I hope it <laughs> answers your question. How, how does the system uh, support if, from, if, if, if you are trying to, to, to reach it from different time zones? It's, it's not really considering which time zone you are. It's really considering which time zone that particular tenant should reside and that particular tenant business need uh, what business date it's... Uh, want to, to be used, sir. Yeah, so please. The related one is, uh, do we agree on the holiday and then the working hour, maybe not working <laughs> Yep, so the question was, what about the holidays or days which uh, can be skipped or grace periods or anything? Fineract has some support regarding working days and holidays, but here with the date handling, it's not we, we haven't really touched that part. So basically for the, for the business date and what, what should be the very next business date, it really depends on, uh, on what you set for it. So you can manually set right now is 10th of October and I believe it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday, but, uh, for Wednesday and Thursday, there is a national holiday. You immediately just, just set the business date to 13th of, uh, of, uh, of October, which is a Friday. And there will be no any transactions happening on, uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, or just the opposite. You can set, okay, I'm not changing business date. For those days, it's still uh, the system will uh, act like it's 10th of October and all the incoming transactions will be accounted that. And on Friday, that will be the next business day. Automatically, right now, we don't have uh, this uh, which do it. Rather, we just left it to the, to the user, to, to the business to define on which date, which date they want to be used for what purposes. As in one of my uh, uh, slides showed, you can decide on to handle differently the weekdays and the weekends. And on weekdays, it's kind of a, always a 24 hour time period, what is a business day. But for weekends, it could be a, I mean, in, in, uh, based on a physical calendar, it's a true three days long period, but business wise, uh, all those three, all those uh, three days are uh, accounted for the very same day. Based on the example, it was Monday. So on Saturday, the incoming transactions were accounted to Monday. On Sunday, the incoming transactions were accounted to Monday, and so on. So. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to you whenever you change it. So that's why I said uh, 
it's 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 I mean the question was if I if I get it correctly whether you have whether you can control on which uh, time it should happen this uh, this change and yes you have absolute control over that it really depends on when you are changing manually or by a scheduled job internally or externally in the Finerac whenever you say uh the business date should be changed from that moment immediately uh, the new business date will be used for any incoming transactions and if you sync it together with the cob job executions then all the all the related actions for a closing for of business day immediately just start working and that's that's exactly why we have two dates one for the actual real uh, real uh, time incoming transactions and the other one for the jobs but the two is kind it's it's kind of dependent by default but it can be totally independent you can decide you you're closing the business date uh, 11 p.m because what because that suits you and you can decide you will just start the cob executions and the processing an hour uh, an hour after it's it's up to you it's it gives a uh, great flexibility and that's why it fits better for business purposes uh, because you can do whatever you want and uh, and the system will act like it yeah ed yeah, Well, so we sent out uh, uh, the proposal and after a design documentation about this business date, what changes were done in the system. And there was a couple follow-up uh, questions and topics, whether holiday and, uh, and grace, grace periods or anything can be introduced for it. Uh, at that time, the, it was said, not for the very first version. For now, we just gives a, a greater flexibility to to you can set whatever you you need uh, business wise. But at the point we can uh, this uh, introduce a, a business calendar which uh, where you can mark holidays or national uh, uh, bank holidays and and so and and these things and can uh, automatize uh, automa and, and can define how it, the system should uh, behave uh, automatically. Whether you are saying, okay, I want to increase by one day, but maybe that one day is on a national holiday, so it just jumps to the very next one. Yeah, that's good. So my question was also more so for if somebody did want to pick up carrying out Oh, sorry. Months, maybe I misunderstood that. Do we have to get to zero uh, I would say no because it was not really uh, identified as a, as a missing gap. But uh, if someone says it is because the, a, a business might require it and the community is happy with it and says, yes, it, it, it would make sense to, uh, to do it, um, it's, uh, it's more than welcome. <laughs> Yeah, probably though, yeah, so whether there are tickets in, in Jira about extensibility, probably no, the answer is no, not right now, because it was not really identified as a, as a, as a missing feature, but feel free to, to raise it. And if people think, yes, it would absolutely make sense, then it can be picked up and enhanced further. Yep. So the question was, uh, what uh, what modules and components in Finera could also uh, benefit from using the business date? I would say nearly all of them, because at a point we should uh, uh, have a generic and common behavior, and introducing this business date is is kind of uh, required for all of them so yes saving account would be uh, a really good next candidate where it should complete i'm not saying we, it should start because it was started but it should be completed 
uh, on, on those and adding some missing uh, dates. Uh, uh, I, I believe there, there was something around the saving account transactions where the transaction date and the submitted on date was not, 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 uh, not, si not uh, similar as we had on the loan components. Across these uh, components, the date handlings and the dates, what we are storing and what we are storing for what purposes should be, uh, should be enhanced and make it more generic for common purposes.